anyone can sign up for an event like a sportive, but when you actually ride it, you have a choice. You could just chug your way around and hope for the best, or you could make it one of the best days you've ever spent on a bike. Cyclosportives and Grand Fondo events are pretty popular these days. And it's around about this time of the year that people start thinking about which ones they'd like to ride and which ones they'd like to sign up for. Here in the UK, one of the most popular ones is the London 100. And I personally have just signed up to ride the Isle of Wight Randonnée. Now this is a completely free event and it's a rather tough 110 kilometers around the Isle of Wight. I've ridden it many times. Sometimes I found it quite difficult and I will admit that on those occasions I've not particularly enjoyed it, but other times when I found it relatively easy, I've absolutely loved it. Actually signing up for one of these organized cycling events is pretty easy. All you need to do is a fairly basic Google search and within seconds you should have dozens of websites with hundreds of rides. Some of them may be international but equally many of them will also be fairly local and pretty much on your doorstep. And when you actually sign up for one I would suggest going for one of these local ones particularly if it's your first time riding an event like this. The main reason why you would want to sign up for one of these events is obviously the challenge. On the one hand, you will want to test yourself, but then at the same time, you do need to be at least a little bit realistic about your limits. Fortunately, all of these events usually have distances, so you can do the short ones, there's a medium one, and usually there's a fairly long one. And by all means, let Billy Big Bananas go off and ride the 200 kilometer epic, but if that's not quite for you, then there's absolutely no shame in signing up for one of the shorter ones. Pretty much all of these sportive websites these days have very detailed route maps and gradient profiles. So it's a very good idea to have a look at these before you sign up so that you know where you're going and you know what sort of climbing you're going to be letting yourself in for. Don't be fooled into thinking that because a ride is a certain distance and there's a certain amount of climbing that they're all going to be the same because believe you me, they're not. For example, the Isle of Wight Randonnée is 110 kilometers round and there's approximately 1500 meters of climbing. But the Isle of Wight is very lumpy, so you're either climbing or descending and you are ticking off that 1500 meters of climbing pretty much all the way around. Not long ago, I did what I thought was going to be a very similar ride. It was 100 kilometers with 1500 meters of climbing. But what I didn't know was that the first half of the ride was more or less flat. So that meant all of the climbing was in the second half. And I don't mind admitting that I did find it very, very difficult indeed. Now, of course, the main thing that you're going to be concerned about when you sign up for one of these sportives is being able to get yourself round and actually cross the finish line. And there's no way round that. That just boils down to how fit you are on the day of the ride. And to actually get fit, I would suggest that you need between eight and 12 weeks of training, depending on how fit you are right now. What I will say though is if you are considering signing up for a sportive, do it as soon as possible and then that way you give yourself the maximum amount of time to be able to train. Pretty much all of these event websites will also have GPX files of the various routes and it's a very very good idea to download this GPX file and install it on your cycling computer if you have a navigation function. Now of course actually on the day the route will be very well signposted but just having that route on your cycling computer will give you an added peace of mind. 
If you have signed up for an event that's local to you, you can then use this GPX file to go out and do a bit of a recce of the route. Now, while you're training for it, I would suggest that maybe one week you go out and ride one half, and then another week you go out and ride the other half of the route, just to kind of get familiar with where the ride goes in real terms. And then maybe just a couple of weeks before the event, you go out and ride the whole thing. And this will just give you a massive, massive confidence boost because you'll know without doubt that you can ride it. And then on the day, you can just enjoy the ride without worrying about being able to actually cross the finish line or not. Training for an event, or indeed doing any training at all, usually means a fair bit of time spent in the saddle. But if yours isn't right, this could potentially lead to considerable discomfort and possibly even some rather embarrassing gentleman's issues. Click here if you want to avoid the old numb nuts and dead slug. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.